Hi everyone, welcome back to our Spark tutorial series. In this video, we will dive into how to efficiently process Spark files using Apache Spark and Scala. If you don't know about Spark file format, Spark is a columnar storage format, meaning data is stored column wise rather than row wise. This storage organization aligns well with the Spark's execution engine, which operates on columns during the query processing. By storing related data together, Parquet minimizes I.O. operations and enhances data locality, leading to improved query performance. Optimizing Spark jobs for performance remains a significant challenge. One key factor in achieving optimal performance is the choice of file format for storing data. Among the various options available, Parquet stands out as the preferred choice for Spark users. And it's widely used in the big data ecosystem, especially with frameworks like Apache Spark and Hadoop. So the key features of Parquet file format is like it's a columnar storage. And Parquet also provides various compression codecs such as Snappy, Gzip, and LZO. This enables efficient data compression, reducing storage requirements and enhancing read-write performance. Spark can leverage these compressed Parquet files directly, leading to faster data access and processing. It also allows predicate pushdown, a technique where filtering is performed at the storage layer before data is loaded into memory. This means that only relevant data is read into memory, reducing the amount of data shuffled across the network and improving query execution time. Spark's Catalyst Optimizer can take advantage of predicate pushdown to further optimize query plans. And Parquet also provides built-in support for schema evolution, allowing schema changes without requiring data migration or restructuring. This flexibility simplifies data pipeline maintenance and enhances productivity for data engineers and data scientists working with evolving datasets. Parquet also comes with built-in support for complex data types such as arrays and maps, ensuring seamless processing across varied types of data sets. And Parquet partitions files into multiple row groups, enabling independent reads of each segment. This parallelism empowers Spark to concurrently process different data segments, harnessing the distributed computing capabilities and optimizing overall performance. Now let's see how we read data into a data frame. I mean Parquet data into a data frame and process that data, do some predicate push down and then write the same data into a another Parquet file. I have created a basic structure for our Spark and Scala code where I have an object and I have a main function and inside the main I have initiated a Spark session variable and I am calling it Spark and at the end of the code I am again calling Spark.stop to stop the Spark session. And everything that we do in Spark goes between these two lines, as I say in almost all my videos. And now my data is located in the folder called data and it's inside Parquet files folder. And I have four Parquet files. One is the file containing the IDs from one to four and the other file from five to eight, nine to 12 and same way 13 to 16. So I have these four Parquet files. We are going to see how to read a single file or how to read multiple files or how to read all the files in this folder. Let's start by reading a single Parquet file. For reading Parquet files into a data frame, we utilize spark.read.parquet function. Let us try to read this into a data frame called df and we just call spark read Parquet provided by the file path. And now I would like to give the path of this single file. I'll just copy this path and I'll just provide the path of this single file and try to read this file, which is Parquet formatted into a data frame. And on top of this data frame, I'll just call df.show method so that it will display the content of this data frame. Now let's try to execute this. As we can see that the data frame is printed. So basically we have read a Parquet file and we have displayed the data inside this Parquet file. So this is how we read a single Parquet file in Scala and Spark. 
so as we can see that it has the ids one two three and four so one two four and three and the next step is to read multiple parquet files but not all the parquet files for reading this multiple parquet files for the same function spark.read.parquet we provide multiple parameters so the first path is id124 let the second path be id528 so i have provided two paths for the same function and now let us try to call this df.show and see what it gets printed so as you can see that it has read all the data which is present in these two files so we have one two three four and five six seven eight so we have eight records now which is from multiple parquet files what if we have the these files in the list let's say that i am storing the files that i am trying to read in a list i am calling it file list and storing it as a list in scala now if you want to read this same file list using this parke method we need to provide this list but this method spark.read.parke will not accept list instead we have to convert this list back to comma separated files so for that we do semicolon underscore star so this list will get converted into multiple files we call this format as where arc and spark.read.parke allows where arc arguments to be accepted now let me try to execute this again and it should display the same data as it has done in the previous execution which is the eight records as we can see that we have eight records so this is how we read a single file or list of files in spark specifically the parquet files using spark.read.parquet method what if we want to read all the files within a directory right we can do that by passing the directory path to this spark.read.parquet function i'll take this complete directory and instead of this file list i'll provide directory path so i have provided directory path so in theory it should display all the ids from 1 to 4 5 to 8 9 to 12 and 13 to 16 basically we should see 16 rows when we run this code so instead of file list we are passing a complete directory path here so let's try to execute this and we can see that it has displayed all the 16 records which are present in all these files right so it's very simple so we just need to use this spark.read.parquet for reading these files so what if there is an another file in the same folder which has a different format of data let's let me try to copy a csv file named data.csv and paste it in this parquet files folder so now we have four parquet files and there is one more file which is data.csv which is a csv file now if i execute the same code to read all the files in the directory let's see what's going to happen as we can see that it failed stating that it cannot read the file file footer and the file name is data.csv because we are leveraging spark.read.parquet which is only capable of reading the parquet files and there is a csv file in the path that we have provided so to overcome the situation like this what we can do is instead of the entire directory name we can pass the directory name followed by star dot parquet so what happens with when we pass this to the spark dot read dot parquet method is that it will initially filter out all the files which are of this format which is star dot parquet star can be anything so all the files which are having parquet extension will be filtered out so all these four files will be filtered and only these files will be loaded into this data frame let's execute and check that out as we can see that 
all these four files are now loaded so this is how we read parquet files into a data frame in spark on scala now we have read the data and we would like to do some filtering on top of this data let's say we are calling it filtered data and what we do is on top of this data frame we do some filter and we want to filter by age and age let's say that age less than 30 so for referencing the columns you need to import this spark.sql.functions column so if we are using if you are referencing multiple functions inside this let's say that it also called something called mode count filter all of these things if we are referencing multiple things we can just do underscore so that we can still use this column because it will import everything that's inside functions but for now we are just using column so let's just import this before we reference this there is an other way to do it so that's you can just import spark implicits spark implicits and instead of using this column we can just use dollar to reference a column so we can do it both the ways so whatever you are comfortable with we can you can use that so hope you remember in our previous videos as well we have used this spark dot implicits for converting data into data frame that is to use 2df function so for me let's take this out and just use this implicits and we have this filter data now so the filter data is in the same data frame in this data frame that we are seeing here we are filtering out based on the column age and we are mentioning that age should be less than 30. so when we apply the filters like this parquet files will basically apply the filter at the storage level so before reading the files itself it will just do this filter and read the files so spark will be reading less data assume that we are in a scenario where we are processing tbs terabytes or petabytes of data and if we are applying some filters on top of the data it is very costly to just read that data and then apply filters instead of that parquet files will allow us to first filter out the data and then read the files which is which we call as predicate push down so filters are pushed down basically into the logical or physical plan that catalyst optimizer does okay now let's see what's there in this filter data instead of dear dash show i'm just doing filter data dot show we have initiated a spark session here and we have imported this implicits before initiating the spark session itself so the thing is we need to do it after spark so once we have initialized this session we have to import the implicits after that now let me try out again so it's now executing and we could see that we now have the records where age is less than 30 and we cannot see any records where the age is more than 30 or equal to 30 right so this is how we apply filters on top of this data and let's say that we wanted to write this data back to a parquet files so let's try to see what happens when we write and how we write this data i'll just print this data and then for writing the data into parquet file similar to this spark dot read dot parquet we have an another function which is data frame dot write dot parquet so we call we call this data frame and call this write function and provide parquet followed by the path to the target so let's say that we are going to write somewhere in this target path i'm just taking the path of the target followed by parquet output let me try to execute this and see if the data is getting written into this path So we should see one more thing here see uh, we got one more look one more path here which is parquet output and the data is written into this parquet file here and along with the parquet extension we can see one more thing called snappy so snappy is ba basically 
the compression codec used by Parquet files while writing this data. And let us try to write this data again. So I'm writing into the same path and now we get an error stating that so path already exists. So this is where in Spark the write modes comes into picture. Write modes in Spark. We have seen write modes in the previous videos as well when we try to write the data into CSV files or JSON files. And if we look at that code to write to CSV, you can see that we have these write modes. Let's, let me also copy and paste them here. So we basically have these four write modes, which is overwrite, append, error, or ignore. So error is the default write mode in Spark. That is why we got an error as the path is already present, right? So this path is already present, we get an error. Error if exist, this path already exists. Now the other write mode is like, let's try the first one, which is overwrite. So we need to provide mode and call this as overwrite. So if we provide this mode overwrite as the name suggests, it will delete the existing files and overwrite the new file on top of it. Let me provide the same path and write again the same data. Earlier we have seen a failure. Now it should overwrite this existing files. So you can see that it is successful, meaning that data is being overwritten in this location. And the other mode is append. Append will basically keep the existing data and append the new data that we are going to write. So basically if we use append mode here, we will see this parquet file as is and a new parquet file will be created for the data that we are writing again. Let's say that we are writing the same data again, the data will be appended and the data will be duplicated and it would be appearing twice for us. And we can see that the new files are created. So when we do an append, so it will basically append the data to the existing data. So one file is already existing, which has this data and it created the other file. So it will have the same data as we have written the same data. And the other mode is ignore. Basically this ignore mode, if the path already exists, it will not do anything. It will not write anything into this path. Let's try to check this out. Basically with this ignore mode, this path should, this data should remain as is without any new files being written. See, so it says that skipping insertion into a relation that already exists. So the path already exists, so it has skipped the inserting the data. So this is how we write data into Parquet files in Spark. And there is one more important concept when we write this data into Parquet files in Spark. Uh, let's change this mode to overwrite. As we have seen that this is compressed into snappy format and we also know that Spark also allows the other compression techniques such as gzip, lgo. So if you want to write this data into a different data using a different compression codec, you can mention that compression as well in Spark. So for doing that, we need to provide something called option and say compression provided by the compression codec that you want to use. Let's say that I want to use the default snappy one with the overwrite modifier and this again it's already snappy so basically all these files should get overridden with the new set of data so see that the old files were gone and we got the new data with snappy.parquet let's say that we want to use a different compression techniques and let's say i want to use gzip i provided i provided the compression to be gzip and running this code again and the job is successful and we can see that the extension is gz.parquet. 
so it means that compression that is used now is gzip so there would be also other compression techniques for the use case that you have you can explore the other compression techniques and see which one provides best performance for your use case by trying out different compression techniques and this is how we basically read process and write the data using spark and scala in parquet file formats i'll be attaching the link to this code in the video description so that you can practice this code in your system and please do like and subscribe if you are interested in more content related to data and analytics